I could probably, because I I speak French, I could probably. Um, and it was just, it was a great overall experience. Um, and of course, that was kind of like half LGBT, half not. Abarcando cine, se nos hace imposible porque son todas las producciones gigantes que se ha hecho. Yo sí quisiera empezar con una que se llama ¿Quién mató a mi prima? Es una producción del 78 que trata sobre un detective que resuelve el homicidio, pero en esa de tu personaje es casi el principal porque ayuda a descubrir todo. Entonces yo te pregunto sobre, aparte de no solo uno de tus primeros debuts, ¿qué recuerdas una anécdota de esta historia? He's asking about the yes, the song. I speak French. Uh, if if it helps, I speak French. Je parle un peu de français, mais oui, c'est très comprends. très petit. Oh, oh, oui. Eh, vous pouvez parler eh, sur la lie de sang, but in English, please. And how was the experience of this role back in the 70s? Eh, the experience going out bad early in your career. How significant it was to be cast in that with it, with the level of people I was cast with. Um, it, it was a magnificent experience. I, I, I can't say enough about Claude Chabrol. He an, an, was an amazing director. You know, he passed away a few years ago. And um, he, he was just such a great giving director. And, and of course, uh, he made the set so much fun. He had a great sense of humor. And then I had my first crush on an older man that was David Hemmings. And then I had a crush on my leading man. So, the, the, it, and then I was in Montreal of all places, which is this, this amazing city. And um, I, 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 I got spoiled off the bat, right off the bat. Uh, I don't know if the word is method actress, but being an actress that works with uh, authors, with people that do, uh, you know, art, art cinema or outdoor cinema. Yes, how, how is your well, experience with these people? Yes, you again, don't I, 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 I've had the opportunity to work with legendary directors who people study in film school. <laughs> and and um, what they all have in common, and I, I didn't say anything for a long time because I just thought this, this can't be right because they don't actually say anything to you. So years later, I got together with, um, you know, my leading man from Blood Relatives, Leon and you know, he'd gone on to work with Joseph Losey and, you know, and a bunch of other great directors. And so we turned to him one another and we said, all the great directors, they, they, they don't really say anything to you, do you? And, and he agreed and we laughed about it. Now, looking back, now that I'm more mature, I realize that you know, what John Huston said is he said, if you want to make a great movie, just get a great script and great actors. Mm -hmm. And that's what he does. He, he, he hires the best people in each department and, and, and also the actors, and he just lets them do their thing. And so that's what I can say that all the great direct, whether it's Hal Ashby or, or, or um, you know, J. Lee Thompson, like Guns of Navarone or, or Claude Chabrol, like what they all, and John Huston, that's what they all have in common. They let everybody just fly and do their thing. And um, and you trust them. You know that they 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 have your back. And ironically, when I worked with John Huston, I was studying um, American film at the time in university. And they were actually while I was going to class that night, I was sh studying John Huston at at university in film class and shooting with him during the day. And equally mm -hmm. with the French cinema class I took, and I would notice that the professor every once in a while would like look over at me while you know just to make sure mm -hmm. I you know, everything was okay in, in what he had to, had to teach about these directors because I, I was working with them. Se magnifique. John, gracias por dejarme hacer la pregunta. Oh, no, es un gusto. De hecho, primero saludamos a Dustin. Dustin, ¿cómo estás? Dustin, how are you? Dustin, no. ¿cómo estás? Bueno? Bueno, I finally yes. made it. <laughs> <laughs> Justin, uh, Dustin, I, I, we just started, but you came right on time uh, of Perfect. course you know you are always welcome and i let you with john johncito dale de hecho antes de, ab de abarcar bueno a preguntarle sobre abadon Rostin y todo eso mm -hmm. yo sí quisiera preguntarle a lisa que siempre he tenido esa curiosidad sobre un rol que es el de Mary, el de violet no sé 
bueno. Yeah, that's no cielo. Yeah. Yes, that yes, was the yeah, second film. Yeah, so yeah, I do it's, understand oh. a little Spanish, right? Oh. Um, that was my <laughs> second you. film that I did Gracias. back to back with with Claude Chabrol. And I was actually amazed that he cast me again. And this time opposite Isabelle Huppert, who's like the Meryl Streep of France. And uh, there I was, 19 years old in Paris, shooting opposite the Meryl Streep of France. And, um, oh, you know, I was somewhat nervous. And, and I remember um, saying to Claude on that shoot, you know, you, you don't, you're not really talking to me like you did on the first film. And he said, that's what I want. I want you to feel isolated. You know, who, he, maybe he was just saying that, who knows, right? But um, I, I, took, I, I took accent classes because it would be like an American, you know, needing to learn an English accent if you were shooting an English film. And uh, so I was a little, you know, self-conscious about whether my accent would be good enough so that they, they didn't loop me. But it was just, just tremendous, just spending six weeks in Paris shooting a period picture. And it was, um, it was a, based on a true story, based on the Lizzie Borden of France. And uh, I had no, and then it, it went on to be selected by, Fran, by, you know, as the official selection at the Cannes Film Festival for, for France. I knew nothing about Khan. So, you know, there mm -hmm. I went back to university and didn't go. I should have gone. And um, Isabelle Dupel won Best Actress. And uh, it's one of my favorite films. It was just, and they had those amazing, most amazing wardrobe designer. And here we are in all these period pictures with the, like the perfect hat and clothing and makeup for that period. It was just gorgeous. John, gracias por preguntar por esa. No, sí, eso es una gran oportunidad. Bueno, ahora sí, hablemos sobre Dustin, te pregunto, aparte de, obviamente, Abaddon, ¿qué te trae esa mano junto con Proyectos Futuros con Lisa? Además, obviamente, ¿hay alguna experiencia que de pronto quiera contar sobre todo? O sea, esta gran alianza, porque tienes un gran reparto, pero cuéntame sobre los, ese próximo proyecto con Lisa, con todo. Okay, Dustin, I know John said, said it's a lot, but I will uh, sum it. Yes, not only tell us about your experience with Lisa on Abaddon, and you know that this is one of the most weighted projects here in the channel, but also what you got uh, under, how, how did you say in English? Yes, on, on the, under your sleeves or something, what projects you got with Lisa? By the way, like I always say, Abaddon got an amazing casting. She's yes, an you do tell because I'd like to know too. Yes, please. Uh, that's a question from Lisa, not from us, from Lisa. Um, well, uh, me and Lisa started off uh, on this YouTube show back in the day. Um, that's how we first met on this show called Our World Today, which is kind of like, um, I guess it's kind of like um, uh, a news kind of uh spoof on on news shows yeah on spoof on news shows that's pretty much what it was <laughs> we made fun of a lot of stuff um but it was really it was an interesting show and we got to the point where we just um we're no longer interested in it we wanted to move on to bigger and better things projects films and the next and and, and we looked at each other we said let's go we said let's go <laughs> And that's what happened. And uh, we just stayed in touch, became very close, and we moved into our next, our, our actually our first film, which is Silver Fox, which we did last May with Eric Roberts, you know, the Legend Academy nominee, Eric Roberts. And uh, that was really fun. It was very interesting. Uh, we loved working with them. Lisa's worked with them once or twice before already. Um, and it was just, it was a great overall experience. Um, and of course, that was kind of like half LGBT, half not. So it, it was really wonderful, and I'm, I'm was just thrilled that Dustin asked me to do the film, and I loved working with Dustin. He mm -hmm. was just so collaborative, so understanding, so empathetic, so sense of humor too. It just it was just you know, Claude Chabrol said you know making a film should be like a picnic, and that's how it was with Dustin. It was like yeah. we want a picnic. And we had great food for lunch. We had great food, great craft services. It was, it was it, great. It was probably the best craft service I've ever had. It was fantastic. Yeah. You know, and, know. And, and, and like all the key department people were, were, were wonderful too. 
So I'm really looking forward to, you know, I, what, what I do love about European directors is, you know, like whether it's Godard or Truffaut or Chabrol or, um, you know, what's his name? The, you know, the Swedish director. They, they use the same cast and, and, and crews all the time. Mm -hmm. um, so it's like going, being with family. And, and, and you get to a point where, you know, when you keep working with people, there's a shorthand where, yeah. you know, you're so comfortable with people that there's, there's not much to say. You just get it. You look at one another and you do it. You just get it. <laughs> yeah. So I'm, I'm going on to another project with uh, Dustin. I'm really looking forward to it. Abidon, of course, the, uh, the famous Abidon, it's on your channel. <laughs> uh, by the way, uh, Lisa, the Swiss director, is it Inmar Berman? That's who I was trying to think of, and I couldn't think of him at the moment. I, I, I was going to say, you know, he uses Liv Allman all the time. Who was it? But, you know, yeah, Bergman and, you know, um, mm -hmm. Fellini, they, all those European directors, they just use the same people in on their cast and crews all the time. But they make classic films. Yeah. You know? yeah. No, a, a John, tú vas a preguntar porque hay algo que estaba hablando Lisa que es sobre, Pregúntale. y lo dijo también Dustin, que es sobre, yes, okay, I will add something because you talk about classic films. Um, it's crazy, Lisa, because you also, yes, you appear on, like, we, can we say, um, our cinema or outdoor cinema, but you also appear on films that we can consider classics of horror, you know, class of 84 how yes. is it, <laughs> uh, how is it? I, I needed to ask about that yes how did you feel to like be here, here, here's the thing i that was not something i planned because i started working out with culture brawl and john houston i wanted to be an artiste no tour and it's it's sad on one way but now i've been you know i've embraced it because unless somebody had gone to film school they didn't know who you know they, they would think Claude Chabrol was a perfume you know <laughs> yeah, they 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 wouldn't know but yeah they knew all the 80s VHS like you know bad is rad uh horror films that I did and I I only did those films because in Canada at the time the the um the industry wasn't uh like it is now at all there was not a boom and there was really the work was only really seasonal And, you know, so you had to, there's no unemployment insurance like there is in the United States for actors. So you had to take what was being shot. And so, for example, one of my, one of my cult films, uh, Deadly Eyes, it was the only film being shot in Canada at the time. It was, you know, because it was winter time. Nobody wanted to shoot then. And it, you know, Robert Klaus entered the dragon, another great director I got to work with. Um, he was the director. But let's face it, it was dogs dressed up as giant rats. And I thought it's time to move to the United States now. But that film now, that's the film that made me embrace my horror fans because I went to the screening in Los Angeles I was invited to. And I saw the fans having such a good time, like screaming and clapping. And so I just thought, you know, I, I'm going to do this. So I... I've started doing a, a few autograph shows and these people arrive and they're all dressed up as the characters from my films and they, they quote, you know, my lines and everything. And they're so much fun. That doesn't happen when you're doing the auteur films. <laughs> and, and it's crazy because um, you mentioned Robert Close and not only for that homage, uh, I, I, I use this t-shirt this from uh, Street Fighter from White Tiger. I needed to do an homage because James Lisa, you got all these audiences. You got the the old cinema audiences, but you got the horror audiences, but you got the the how do we say martial arts. It's, it's just amazing how though people remember those they they love those '80s films on VHS. And it was yeah. like I did say to one <laughs> fan, he goes, oh, "I got all your movies on VHS." I said, oh, "VHS is so bad. It's so grainy." And he said, "Bad is rad." <laughs> yeah. So you know, there 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 there, there you go. There you go. But it's, but it's crazy because in some pages, like Radio Music, Class 84 is considered one of the best movies, not only from that year, but even from history. I know there are crazy um, countdowns made by fans, but the fans are really raving like, no, no, this is a classic. You need to bold it. You need to. I, I need to say that. And I, and I'm one of these fans. 
from it, all it, you. I, I was just reviewing today because I'm doing an autograph show called Horrorama on on this weekend, and so I was looking for images to print for the fans, and I was looking at all this. The, 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 now, in retrospect, all these websites that talk about that film that I had no idea that it's still out there and and how people revere it and and it's it's really like gotten even more popular and and really stood the test of time on so many levels but Bi Violet not here appears on the best movies of history in this condom but I watching your your movies let me okay you have to forgive me class of 84 also it, it appears on 1982 and 6,000 unknown in total. So, both movies, the Chevrolet, but also Class of 80, 84, appears on the Condom. Well, I, the I, know, I know that uh, Violet Nozier, you know, it was, you know, Vincent Camby from the, from the um, New York Times said it was one of the 10 best films of the year. Um, it, you, you're very erudite when it comes to film because you seem to, you know, both the classics and you know the exploitation <laughs> films. Yeah, that's that's our that, that's our goal as a channel. Uh, showcase. Yeah. I, I, I've got to look at those sites that you just said. Uh, I will send you. Yes, John, please. Acuérdame enviarle, acuérdame enviarle a, a Lisa, que obviamente a Austin, los conteos donde aparecen ambas películas, Violet no sé, y Clase del 84 como mejores películas de la historia. Ah, oh, sí. Es que, pero dale, gracias. Tengo, tengo yo una curiosidad, Lisa, porque, a ver, son dos preguntas en una. Primero, es muy difícil ver Fobia, porque es una película que muy poco se visualiza y además se necesita el impacto como reto. O sea, para mí yo quiero volver a verla en cine. Nunca la he visto uh -huh. en cine, pero debería volverse a repetir porque es una historia totalmente que la verdad aprenderíamos pues los, la nueva generación y todo pero también hay una película que sí te felicito y yo te digo wow no sé cómo lo hiciste en The Slugger's Guy gracias por preguntar por eso wow. I'm, so, I'm so glad with John because he, you mentioned both of these directors and so I'm happy that he asked yes, about Fobia that in fact he feels that this movie needs to be shown again on cinemas, and it's crazy because it's one of the most weird projects from John Huston. Nobody imagined John Huston doing this kind of movie, but also you mentioned Hal Ashby. Tell us about this Luger's wife, please. Oh, Hal Ashby. I just felt so blessed that I got to work with him because years beforehand, before I moved to the United States, I was in Canada and it was just when Entertainment Tonight just started. It was like in its first year. And I was watching it, you know, it was so exciting. There had been no coverage on the entertainment business like that up until Entertainment Tonight came on. And there was a segment with Hal Ashby. And I said, oh, God, I'd love to work with Hal Ashby. And my, and my boyfriend at the time said, you'll work with him. And it happened. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And he, he, for me, is one of the most underrated directors because... He's got a list of films that are like talk about auteur that he's done. Mm -hmm. And I, I never see anyone doing retrospects on him. I don't understand why that is. He's done Harold and the, the last one. detail and being there and just like in documentaries, like let's spend the night together about the stones and he just so many great films. I, one of the things I do have to say though, and that's what I do like about um, Dustin is he's not intimidated is that I did find in the course of my career that when I would go in and have meetings with young directors, they would often, I could tell, feel insecure because they'd look at the list of my directors that I'd work with. And I could tell they felt insecure around me. And where Dustin doesn't, Dustin's confident. Confident all the way. Yeah. <laughs> you almost have to be. You really have to be. Or, or, you're confident or crazy. It's one of the two, right? Yeah, um, one or two. <laughs> uh, loco. 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 See. Si. Si. Wow. John. Hey, in fact, John, I will ask John, it will be great that this channel do this review from Halashmi. He deserves it. I don't know if all the whole career or the others. Loco's wife. I will ask John. John, 
es que dice algo Lisa que tiene razón, nadie ha hecho retrospectivas de Halasby, yo no sé si hacerla acá o hacer una, re una reseña de Slugger's Wife, ¿tú qué opinas? Pues miraremos de ambas, a ver si se mezclan de ambas opciones, pero creo que lo más importante es como retroalimentar las películas como, como las más recomendadas de, de, las, de Asby. Y de Lisa. Mm. Ok, I, I, I asked John, he said that he will be great at doing this channel, like a retrospective from uh, Al Ashby, and I asked not also from Al Ashby, also from your, your career, Lisa. It's, it's amazing. Yes, and, and, and the other great director I worked with too, that Again, I think he, people only know who he is because of film school, but J. Lee Thompson directed Cape Fear and Guns of Navarone and Tiger Bay. And I mean, Guns of Navarone and Cape Fear, like epic movies. Oh, yes. And, you know, Scorsese remade. Made it my top of the world, that Cape Fear? No. Cape Fear, okay. the original, of course. The, the, well, the, 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 Scorsese did the remake. Yes. J. Lee Thompson did the original. And so I loved what Scorsese did, but after I saw the film, I called up Jay Lee Thompson and I said, Scorsese's great, but I got to tell you, Lee, your film's better. And Guns on Navarone. They should have a favorite. double header at a review cinema, both films, back to back. Yes. And Guns Very on Navarone interesting. Is one. You know, I, I guess, you know, it's like comparing, you know, the color of money to The Hustler, you know, Scorsese redid, you know, The Hustler. And it's great because you made me remind my, my family. Yeah. Guns on Navarone is one of the favorite movies of my dad. And that's great. Oh. <laughs> what, uh, The Hustler? We are having, no, Guns on Navarone. Oh, yeah, The Guns of Navarone. That, it, that's really a, a, a guy picture. Like, men and guys love that. <laughs> it's, it's, you know, real testosterone movie. Yes, that, I, I think that's why my dad loves it. Oh, no. <laughs> so much. <laughs> okay, yeah. John. Qué buena pregunta. También yo le pregunto a los de qué, o sea, bueno, lo más importante no solo poder colaborar con Lisa, ¿cuál ha sido el manejo más importante de poder desarrollar, por ejemplo, la nostalgia? Porque yo sé que Dustin ha visto la mayoría de las películas de Lisa. Sí. Eh, Happy Birthday to Me, que es una de las más importantes. Pero, hombre, Dustin, ¿cómo ha sido manejar todo este concepto? ¿Cómo ha sido elaborar como cada química? con los actores y también el, qué opinas del trabajo de Lisa o sea, cuéntame sobre todo eso That's a really beautiful question from Dustin Dustin, yes, yes. you got in your cast in the cast on Abaddon a mix of nostalgia but also the, the new how do you not handle but how do you feel about these nostalgic feelings and yes, this is a really great question from John also what do you think of Lisa's career, man? The Lisa's career. Yes. <laughs> he's oh, kick, shit. he's kickstarting it again. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yes. She has to come back. <laughs> um, you, you know, really, she has a fascinating career. I mean, for all the people she worked with, and just a little mind blowing. Um, I mean, she has a fascinating career from from the very early on stage to now. I mean, she's making a comeback, of course, but everything she's done uh, beforehand in the past is just amazing. All the people that she's worked with are just legends, you know. Well, you I know, I, I I heard an interview with Donald Sutherland after just after he had, he had worked with Bertolucci, and he said he considers success not the success of his films because you have no control over that right but having but the people that he's gotten to work with yes and yes. I, I feel that's true i have no control if the film is successful but i've had an opportunity to work with legendary directors yeah tony curtis oh you get to work with them too right yeah 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 i've gotten to work with rod steiger and i, I i've worked with amazing actors too Yeah, Lou Gossett Jr. and wow. oh, just epic. And I, I was just so delighted to work with, you know, Eric Roberts. He's such a good actor. Twice. <laughs> oh Twice. my God, Twice. Hope of Granite Village and and Star Eighty and and um, the Dark Knight. Yeah, he's 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 definitely a legend in my book. Yeah, me too. And, and he's he, so much fun. He's so funny. I think he's underrated because uh, 
because he doesn't get enough credit for what he really is. I mean, his sister is really up there, but Eric is just an amazing actor. I think he should get more credit for what he does and how much work he does. And, you know, I, I know he's coming out with one of his biggest films called Babylon, which I think is about this year or next year. But, um, I mean, he just, he's fascinating. Plus, you got to work with Michael J. Fox before the J came in there. Which you know, right. is one of my all-time favorites. So. That that's what was really interesting, though, in looking at the the you know reading about class of 1984 today. Because, like mm -hmm. I said, I was looking for images for this autograph show, and one of the one of the articles was about how it, you know it's the 40th anniversary this year of that film. Wow! And it was talking about that the only tragedy looking at like in 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 the film today is that michael fox in that movie he's taken away to the hospital right mm -hmm. and now to watch that looks really tragic because in real life he had a bigger tragedy with his il illness than in the movie well, I really liked Michael J. Fox in that movie. I mean, he was so young, but that was right before, like, Back to the Future and everything. Yeah, it's so the same was... character as in Back to the Future. Like, he, that was his brand. You know, he played yeah. these gosh, golly darn characters, right? <laughs> yeah. That's right. That was his brand. That was against my brand to do that movie. They didn't want me to. They wanted me to play the part of the that other student. And I said, oh, you know, please, I... I don't even have to open my mouth for that role. It's just no challenge at all. And they said, but that's the way we see you. I said, I know. And they said, we don't think you can do the other part. And I said, you know, I grew up with four brothers and I, I, I've i seen these kind of people around, you know, their friends and that. And just let me come back and do the reading. And I did and I got the part. But, yeah, they wanted me for that. The nice girl, you know, that you see, you know, student in the movie. But yeah. that's like, that's kind of like what everybody knows you as now is like that girl with the pink hair with the tongue sticking out. And it's, that's everywhere. Right, exactly. it's everywhere. Exactly. <laughs> and, and and like my son, he's 21, but when he was younger, he, he said to me once, he showed me his cell phone and it wasn't that picture, but it was another picture of Patsy. And he said, this is who I tell people my mother is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, that now makes you a classic uh, character actor, right? I mean, it's, right. it's like an iconic role that that character is just going to be sticking with people. Yeah, yeah, it's true. Yeah, you know, at and the time we thought we thought so much of that was far fetched, like to have to walk through a metal detector to get into school, and a teacher taking a gun to school, and you know, that was a really scary moment for me, though, as far as acting was when I had that scene opposite Roddy McDowell, where he has the gun mm -hmm. to my head. Yeah. Because he's such an epic actor. And I just and it was a really emotional scene. And, you know, Roddy McDowell can steal a scene from Lassie. He's so good. Right. He, he can steal scenes from animals. He's so good. Mm -hmm. So I, I, I thought, oh, am I going to be able to hold up my own? It's an emotional scene. And I'm like face-to-face -face close up with Roddy McDowell, but I was happy with the, with, with the result. And what a gentleman, what a great actor, just, just like Eric Roberts, like their, their class and, and, and gravitas in, in, in the level of their acting. And same with Eric, I just thought, oh, I hope I can hold my own with him. And with Eric happened something like similar, because yes, we know that his Oscar nomination, and we know about, yes, the, the, the movies that he did in Hollywood, but there are people like uh, the best of the best, or there are people that, no, I remember his work in, 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 the, in, the, in the movies, in the horror movies, so there is, some, there is something to, like, to go with it, but not in the obvious places, like, I, I mean, there are some people that remember some from the action movies, other from the serious movies, other from the horror movies, but he's such a class, he's such a class at, of, of one actor. La verdad, esto ha sido increíble, la verdad, dos tenisas fantásticos. Algo que sí quiero, se me había olvidado, pero menos mal me acordé, Andrés, es que hay una película de Lisa que me parece espléndida, la verdad no sé por qué, o sea, no le han entrevistado sobre aquella película que es Mindfield. Mindfield, para mí, yo digo que es como, 
la obra maestra de Jean-Claude Lord, el del famoso Bingo. Entonces, yo lo que le pregunto a Lisa es sobre cómo fue la experiencia en esta película, qué anécdota tiene sobre el director que ya no está con nosotros, pero que es increíble. Y para Dustin, la última pregunta es sobre ya qué adelanto va a ir más sobre oh, sobre ya qué podemos esperar y, e invita a las personas para que puedan sintonizarse con, con la historia. Ok, as a final, first from Lisa. I don't know if you have to correct us if somebody have asked you before about Minefield. Uh, if, don't, if nobody has done it, John feel like, why? Because he really loved that movie and he want to know more. If you have something to tell us about working with uh, John claude Lord or an experience of this movie. And later, Dustin, yes, you know, as always, tell us uh, um, the news, the, 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 the Something new that you have to tell us about Avan and of course to invite people to watch it. But first with Lisa and Minefield. So um, I was very excited about Minefield because of the subject matter uh, about the CIA doing experiments with uh, psychiatric patients with LSD uh, in Canada. I was very excited about it. Um, and I, I really liked Jean-Claude Lord. Uh, I was suggested to him by the producer. Unfortunately, it was a very troubled set um, because Michael Ironside was very unhappy. And he, in fact, uh, <laughs> mm -hmm. I found this out later from the producer. He, in fact, was so unhappy that he, he said that I couldn't act and he wanted me fired and he wanted the director fired and he wanted to take over for the director and have the girlfriend play my, his girlfriend play my part. <laughs> A little, little self-serving, and and so it was it was a big disappointment for me because um, I thought it was uh, a great story, and of course I got to work with Christopher Plummer. He was another great director uh, actor I got to work with. But I've seen this situation before with um, some directors where they allow uh, an established actor to intimidate them, and that poisons the whole set. Now that wouldn't have happened with Christopher Plummer in the room, but it was happening when Christopher Plummer was not on the set, and and it 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 it, it was very unfortunate, very 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 unfortunate. I saw that happen one other time where I saw, well maybe two other times, where I saw an established star in, intimidate the director, and you know we everybody on the set is looking to the director for direction to be the leader. And when you see someone that isn't behaving and not honoring that and not being part of the team, it's demoralizing for everybody. So um, it was it was a big disappointment, that film. It was, you know, it's like having a miscarriage, I guess. You know, you carry the baby around and then there's a miscarriage. So, yeah, but that was the first time I played a, a leading woman. I, up to then, I was an, an ingenue, so that was my first, you know, leading woman adult part. Yeah. And once oh. again, I was intimidated. I thought, oh my God, you know, am I getting able to stand my own opposite Christopher Plummer? But another epic actor with class and uh, shows up, knows his material treats people well, has respect for people. Yeah. Wow. Thanks for the honesty. Wow. Yes. Yes. No, thanks when I was younger, you. I didn't, I, I, I contained all this stuff. And I've made this decision recently because I just thought, wait, and, and you know, when I, I made the decision to start talking about it, actually, things that weren't, is after the Harvey Weinstein thing. Because people started saying, you know, why are we protecting these people that aren't behaving well? So I thought, why am I protecting these people who aren't behaving well on our sets? And this is a lesson to everybody then, that it happens and this is how you deal with it. And they, these people have to, 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 to not talk about it means we're protecting them so there's no consequence for their bad behavior. 
And I have to say that this kind of behavior doesn't happen in Europe on sets. It's more of an American thing because it's just not, it just wouldn't be tolerated there. It's just not professional to behave that way. It's just not. And, 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 and it's just so painful as an actor to watch a big star beat up on a, on a director. It, it, it's, it's, yeah, it's, it's like watching somebody getting beat up in real life and no, everybody's afraid to do anything or to say anything. So everybody watches and nobody does anything. But it poisons the whole production. Do what you say because not, it's not only in North America, in South America also. Mm, That's there is, right. I won't, I, won't, I won't mention the director, but there was a case of a big, big director here in Colombia, in fact, that's the only trivia, the only director that had been nominated from the Oscar in from Colombia. And it, uh, it, it's sad. And, and, and in the channel, one, uh, one uh, writer, screenwriter, a female screenwriter, tell that she felt sad and angry that the wife from the director even defend, defend him because he was like, why we had to. Uh, yes, protect somebody that uh, abuse for actresses. Of course, there is this, 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 this. It, it just doesn't this. make sense. Why yes. are we protecting those people? So thank you for talking to me. In fact, the, I feel great with this channel because uh, you are not the first person that talks about this subject and you are free and open to talk about this subject. Right, we are, so, yeah, we, and so Jean-Claude Lord died. I think maybe last year. Uh -huh. I was so sad for him that that you know he just he was not treated well on on this film, and so then you're everybody's walking around the set on eggshells. It's just not you know the, the 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 whole thing for directors to create an environment where everybody feels safe to be really vulnerable on the set. Okay, so you know because it's vulnerability that people pay the big bucks to go see an actor, you know. And and when somebody is abusing somebody else on the set, then it affects the general environment and the morale on the set. And, and so it affects the product in the end. Well, we feel great that this space, not only you tell us about this, but also to showcase the work from the director. And, and a sad situation, but uh, let's do this like an homage for his work and working also in this toxic environment that this actor caused. So I will tell John, John, gracias por la pregunta, porque esto, sea como sea, se está mostrando la obra un director, es que fue un set muy, muy tóxico por culpa de mm -hmm. un actor. Creo que tuve, I promise okay. to translate everything to John. But now we move, and thank you, Lisa. But now we go with Dustin. Yes, Dustin was new with Abaddon. Uh, you know the thrill, invite people to watch it. Tell, tell us what was what, new, what's new with this project that we love in this channel. Go ahead, man. Um, Abaddon, um, well, there's not a whole lot of new information yet. I mean, there's still a lot of things pending and we're waiting, you know, we're still in a pre-production stage, you know, which is a pretty long stage. Uh, I can tell you one thing though, we did get Larry Sanders. I don't know if I said last time I was on the show, but we got NBA, former NBA basketball star Larry Sanders. So he is official. He is playing the Up and Don. That's pretty much all I can really give away at the moment. Um yeah, that's I mean that's pretty big news to have a former NBA star being the actual creature in the movie, the demon creature. Wow. Yeah. Wow. John, ya viste quién va a ser el demonio, ¿no? It's because he's six foot eleven. When she's on, he's like seven foot. So he fits the bill perfectly, and he was already approved. And they love the fact that uh, he wants to do it. So I will translate that. John, Larry Sanders, el, el antiguo jugador de la NBA, va a ser Abaddon, el demonio. Oh man. It's dice amazing. que y lo que más risa que es que no, dice que no hay noticias que eso es noticia. Entonces, ¿no? why you say that there are no news that this is a bit really hey, great yes. news? <laughs> 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 Don't troll us, man. Well, I mean, that's just that, that's really the only update I'm really allowed to give out as far as Larry Sanders goes. I mean, he just he, he's official. 
And uh, I, I know that we're all excited about him being on board with everybody else that's already uh, on board already. So we're still waiting. Everybody else is pending. We're still waiting for them to go through and, you know, things to start moving along. I can give you more up to date later, a later date when we have everything going. John, yo creo que viene el aplauso y el saludo de Lisa, lo que tú me digas, amigo. Yo estoy sorprendido. No. Bravo. Yes. <laughs> I, can, I, I can clap because I got my hand on the cell phone, but I will ask you, Lisa, does he know the drill? Yep. Lisa, the camera is yours. Tell the people to the social media so people can follow you. Send a big hi to wherever you want, to the channel, to somebody. And the camera is yours. And tell us what we can... Uh, there is a project that, oh, stay ahead with this project, stay, stay, stay close, go ahead. I just love South American films. And uh, I can probably, because I, I speak French, I could probably learn some Spanish because I understand it. My son went to Spanish school. And I, I'd love to work in, in South America and do some of those independent films. Like they're, they're, they, they just have so much um, life and, and feeling to them. So I'm putting that out there. Even if I just do a cameo, I'd just love to do a film in South America. I hope that John gets so rich so he can cast you in a movie here in, in, in South America. John, tienes que volverte muy rico y hacer esto, hacer un casting con Lisa, ya que trabajar en, en Sudamérica. Wow. Es asombroso. Hay que tener un buen producto para hacer una historia perfecta con todos ustedes. Yes, we need a, a really great producer like, like Eric to do a movie here in South America with all of you, yes. but I know that, and in fact, not only, and thank you, Dustin, for bringing Lisa to your team, and yes, doing this combat, Lisa, we way more for you, you know that we love you in your whole career, like you say, in the RC cinema, but also in the, in the VHS movies, in the every genre. I think that we're going to take the picture. Yo, vamos a tomar la foto, ¿cierto? Yeah, por favor. I was telling to, to, to Dustin an anecdote. We are from Colombia. But yes. somebody thought that we are, we, we, we are from, from the States. And it's crazy because they invite you, they invite us to, uh, to a premiere. Oh, please, come as a media and we wait. And it, and it was today. Please come to the theater and you got food. And, and it were, John asked her that, thank you. Well, no, we are from Colombia, but I feel happy and feel so blessed because I love this project. I mean, not even in my wildest dreams, I have imagined to talk to you. I mean, I'm from Colombia, and I and, and I am, and we are from a small city in Colombia, from Cúcuta. It's, it's the border with Venezuela. Uh, so, yes, we need. I like I was saying to to Dustin, we need to get the passport and start start traveling. Start That's going right. to the festival. Right. That's right. But now, now, where are you right now? What city are Cucuta. you in? Cúcuta oh. is in the border with Venezuela. Okay. It's, Cuc it's just on in the north of Colombia. As far south as I've been, I've been to Brazil and I've been to Aruba. That's as far south as I've been. I've been to Rio. And it's crazy because Aruba technically is is not far away from Cúcuta because uh, I know Aruba is I know, it's just Venezuela. off the coast of Venezuela. Yeah. Yes. And uh, there, there, there's like a legend that Cúcuta is more from Venezuela than from Colombia. But we are happy because finally the border the border was closed. The border was reopened. So, ah, oh, yes, thank God. Thank you, Lisa. Thank you. Dustin. Thank you. Thank you. As Dustin yes, knows, this is This is this is his casa. This is his home. So Lisa, this is your casa. This is your home now. You're welcome every time. Hey. And mi casa es su casa. Yes, yes. mi casa es tu casa. Gracias Thank a you. ambos. Thank you, Jules. Both. Okay. Gracias. You. Merci beaucoup. Thank you so much. Gracias. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. Bye bye. Adios. Bye bye. Adios. Adios. Adios.